Okay, so on my FYP lately, I've been seeing so many videos of like, watch my husband fall out of love with me, which is exactly what I watched happen whenever I went through my pregnancy with my boyfriend's child. So in December of 2019, I found out that I was pregnant and I was so excited. And my boyfriend was overjoyed. We literally had one of the best relationships during this time. But once COVID hit in 2020, I ended up getting laid off of work. He continued to work, but I felt like it was pointless for me to find another job just because I was about to have a baby and raise a kid. And in April, we get to find out the gender and guess what? It was a boy. I was extremely happy, but then I just started to notice that he stopped caring. Like, I would be like, hey, the baby is kicking, and he would just be like, okay. Completely monotone, completely blank face. Then June comes around, and I ended up gifting him an iPhone 11 Pro Max. Since it was under my name, I had access to see who could text and call him. And I know a lot of his family's numbers, including cousins and aunts, but there was one number that I didn't recognize that stood out the most. And the messages between him and this number would not stop until 3 a.m., which is when he would go to sleep. So I decided to go up and ask him who is more important than me and his son. So his response to me asking who is more important than me and his son is no one, babe. I just said, okay, and a couple months go by and I go into labor. He's not even excited and doesn't even try to care. A few months later, and I see that number pop back up again. And I also noticed that there was an exchange of pictures going on. So I decided to call the number up and be like, hey, who is this? How do you know my boyfriend? And she responded with, who is this? And why do you need to know this? Because I'm with him. I was bawling and I tried to confront him on it, but he literally denied it. And then he threatened me because I don't work that he would take my son away and get full custody. And because of all this crap, I just shut up and agreed to make it work for our son. And then not even a few weeks later, I see that number pop back up again and I lose my ish. Now I don't condone violence, but the second that this man got home, I was so upset that I ended up punching him and he fell into the wall. I went through his phone and ended up finding out that he was also talking to another girl as well. So I whipped the phone around in his face and I was like, who is this? Now that I officially have this man's phone, I can see everything. When I asked him who the first girl was, he was like, no one. And I was like, no, straight up, who is she? And he finally admitted that she was a coworker. So I go through his pictures and I see that they took selfies together, like really close selfies. And he also took a pic of her butt. There's literally a whole video where she's shaking it for him. I started bawling and I threw everything at him. I left the house for several days. We agreed to try to fix things again, but I'm taking his paychecks and messing around with his cousin now to get revenge on him. And honestly, him and his cousin look a lot alike. So if I ever were to get pregnant again, he wouldn't even question it. Also, if you didn't catch on, the other girl was his ex-girlfriend and she's still reaches out asking him for money and asking him to move in with her and even when we were trying to work things out he would constantly think about leaving our family for her so i literally thought people were joking when they were talking about stepsisters getting with their stepbrothers turns out it's not a joke and i just found out that my boyfriend cheated on me with his stepsister when i was a freshman in high school i got into a lot of trouble and ended up getting my phone taken away for six months and had no social media for a year my parents literally didn't allow me to have snapchat until the summer before my senior year but i was allowed to have an instagram so the moment that i was allowed to have my socials back i made an update on my story and within a few hours a boy that i had been talking to before i got my phone taken away swiped up we started messaging talking again hitting it off all over again and even though he lived about two and a half hours away within a week we started dating I had a few other friends that were dating guys in the same town so i was like hmm if they can so can i after dating him for a few months i decided to invite him over to my dad so that they could meet both my dad and him hit it right off the bat chef's kiss also we can call this guy darren i noticed that he was super weird with his phone and he would put it in his pocket anytime i was near i asked him what that was about and he was like well i just don't want to be on my phone it seems rude it seemed like a logical response so i brushed it off but the next day a girl messaged me saying that she was dating darren and also other girls as well. So once this first girl reached out to me and said that she had been dating Darren, I blew up in his face. She explained to me that they had been dating for a few weeks, so I ended up breaking up with him. But then he was blowing up my phone and threatening to unalive himself, so I got extremely worried. And I ended up just giving in to getting back together with him. And once I got back together with him, things were pretty much a smooth ride for six months. It didn't seem like he was talking to any other girls, and he would come to my mom's house on one weekend and then my dad's house on the other weekend. So we were seeing each other every weekend. And it was so nice until I got a message from a different girl who also claimed that they had been dating. So again, I blew up in his face and I broke up with him. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And once again, the manipulator in him made a reappearance and he blew up my phone just crying, saying that he was going to end his life, and again, getting me to fall for his stupid tricks. This time I decided to go about it a different way and get all the social media passwords. I would log in and check periodically, but if you guys remember, I did not have a Snapchat. So the day that my parents allowed me to have one, I went ahead and logged into his. So once I was allowed to have Snapchat and logged into his account, I saw him messaging multiple other girls, including his stepsister. And when I tell you guys I scrolled up on these messages and found out that he had been sleeping with her too, this had been going on for two and a half years before he finally called things off with me and broke up with me. We met up to exchange things and I gave him all of his stuff back, but he didn't give me any of my stuff back because he forgot. And he tried to give me his own stuff back, saying that we were on a break and would get back together. 
Because I called things off with him, he ended up throwing all of my stuff, like my clothes, jewelry, Beats headphones, in a fire pit and burned them. As if he was the victim. Like, what did I do to you? You were the one sleeping with your stepsister our entire relationship. After about three months, he showed up with a new girlfriend on his Instagram. And she ended up messaging me asking why he still had pictures of me all over his room. And why my necklace with my name on it was hanging in his truck. If anyone's wanting to know how to get revenge on someone who spread rumors about you, listen to the story and it may come in handy. So I had a friend that we can call Miranda who was obsessed with me. I was genuinely friends with her, but she would never give me a break. I could not get a breather from her at any point in time. Everywhere I went, she went. And this girl would actually get so upset with me anytime I would go over to another friend's house. I knew she was really insecure and just trying to get attention, so I tried to be patient with her. However, one day I just could not take it anymore. I got into a massive fight with her over how overprotective she is. I literally said, you are a stage five clinger. And in response, this girl ended up joining my basketball and softball team, which I've been on for forever. She told her mom that I was bullying her, which was a complete lie, but then her mom went to the coaches. She got me kicked off the team and then continued to spread rumors about me. I ended up losing my best friends and even my boyfriend over the rumors that she spread about me. So that's when I decided to get revenge. So I decided that I was going to send her over an apology gift with makeup in it, which was a mix of drugstore items and poison ivy. So I put together an apology gift for her for um, bullying her, even though I did not. The gift that I put together was some makeup I got from Walgreens, but I decided to add some poison ivy to the eyeshadow so that she would get a rash. I then set up a hidden camera and watched as she put it on. And as expected, the rash started to form. After she noticed, I started to tell her off and accuse her of all the stuff she did to me. And she was so pissed that I managed to get a confession out of her. She was very much just like, yeah, I did that. Literally over me not wanting to spend every waking second with her. And the best part of it is that she threatened me on camera. So I cut out the part about the poison makeup and told her if she didn't tell my friends, coaches, and significant other what she was doing. I would send the video to everyone so she admitted to all of her crimes and I got back on the team, I got my friends back, and my boyfriend apologized. I ended up totally fine and she ended up losing credibility with basically everyone. So did you guys know that our typical search engines are only 4% of what we see on the web? Which is like Google, Bing, Firefox. I'm going to be talking about some of the most popular websites on the dark web. So get ready because this is going to be intense. So here's a photo example just to give you guys an idea of what this looks like. At the top is the area that we do our research for school on. Or stalker X's, I don't know. And then 500 times larger than the surface web is the deep web. The deep web is filled with information that we cannot access, such as medical documents, iCloud, personal information. Like I obviously can't Google what your family history or intake forms say, so that's where this is stored. And then the dark web holds the last 6%. This part of the internet was created by the U.S. Navy in the 1990s, and it was made so spies could share info without being tracked. Well, then the government decided to release it to the public. And you need the specific software to go to it called TOR, which stands for the Onion Router. It hides your identity and gives you access to non-surface web pages. And on this section of the internet, you can do things like buy people's credit card information, get counterfeit money, participate in drug trafficking, hire hackers and hitmen, and way worse. So all of these websites are listed in very long, hard-to-remember codes that change very frequently to avoid law enforcement. And instead of using .com, .org, .net, you use .onion. Well, one of the biggest websites on here is called Silk Road. This website is responsible for 1.1 billion in transactions in one year. It is a massive drug market. You can buy things like counterfeit money on here, also Facebook accounts to hack into, fake passports, stolen credit cards, and I may or may not know a few people who have gotten their fake IDs from there. Honestly, not uncommon. Now, there's also hitman websites on here as well. For example, you have something called Assassination Market. And y'all, this is insane. On this website, a victim will be added to a list of targets. Users will bid Bitcoin on when they think this target is going to die. The most accurate bidder gets the whole pot of Bitcoin. The problem is that many of these users start to just participate themselves so that they can win. Like they become the hitman, which is way cheaper than just hiring an actual hitman. But there are theories on who's actually responsible in controlling all of this. Welcome back to my series on the dark web. The big theory surrounding the Hitman websites is that the government may still be in control of the dark web and be very aware of who is where, even though it appears that they're not. Because it was literally created by the government, how would you be safe from the government? And in actuality, the theory is that they may just be letting people do the dirty work for them. Like, they're the ones who might actually be putting hits on people. But we will probably never know. The dark web goes so much deeper than this because of websites like Human Products, which sells food, belts, wallets, and clothing made from, you guessed it, humans. So I don't know if anyone's in need of a nipple belt, but this is literally the kind of things that they sell. Of course, there's even darker stuff like red rooms, cannibalism, and 